What's up Dream City Youth? Hey, it's Pastor Brian here with another Daily Devo. Got a question for you today. What do you do when God shakes up your normal? I don't know about you, but for me, coronavirus has definitely shaken up my normal. I'm a very routine guy. I would wake up in the morning, I would go to the gym, I would spend time with the Lord. I don't know if you know, but the gyms are closed. And so I have to go, man, what am I gonna do to go work out? What am I gonna do to fill my day? I work from home. I know for you, you guys are all at home for school. It's like, what do we do when God shakes up our normal? And it made me think of a passage in Acts 3 where I'm going to read two verses and give a little bit of context on the rest of the scripture. But I want you to open up your Bible right now, whether that's your electronic Bible or your physical Bible. I personally think that God gives us extra points in heaven if we have our physical Bibles open. But if you could turn with me to Acts 3, and we're going to look at verse 1 and 2, and it says this. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple for the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. A man who was lame from birth, now this isn't that he was actually lame, like his jokes were lame, like some of you think mine are. He was lame, it means like he couldn't walk. He was lame from birth and he was being carried there. He was placed each day at the temple gate called Beautiful so that he could beg from those entering the temple. I want us to focus on two things really quickly with this passage. The first is this, is we see Peter and John were doing what they had always been doing. You see at three in the afternoon, they would always go to the temple and they would always pray. But for some reason today was gonna be a little bit different. You see this man, we see that for as long as he had been, he'd been going to this gate, they would place him, his friends would place him at this gate and he would beg for money from anyone walking into the temple. And he would ask person after person, hey, can I get some money, can I get some money? And he asked Peter and John, he's like, hey man, can I get some money? And that moment, Peter and John, their normal had been disrupted and they had a choice. They could either acknowledge the new or they could continue on with their normal. And they stop and this man, who was begging for money, he asked them, hey man, can you give me some money? And Peter and John look at them and, they, and he says, he's like, hey man, look at us. Look at me. And it says that this man turned his attention because at first it wasn't just like Peter and John were walking. There were crowds of people. And he looked and it says he looked expectantly at Peter and John. And I think in the midst of all this, what God is trying to do is God is trying to get your, your attention in the midst of this change and in the midst of this transition. And are you fixing your focus on God? You see, this man turned his attention. It says he was expectant. But what was he expectant for? He was expecting that they were going to give him money. And I can only imagine the disappointment that he would feel when Peter says to them, and he goes, man, silver or gold I do not have. And so I'm assuming if, if I was the man, I'd be like, bro, then why did you stop? Why did you acknowledge me if you're not going to give me what I need? But if we continue to read on what Peter says, he says, man, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. And could it be that maybe for you, you're just waiting for Corona to end so that way you can go back to the normalcy of your life. You can go back to the normal things, go hang out with your friends and, and do what you've always done. But could it be that God is not wanting to, you to go back to your normal when this is all over? Could it be that what God is trying to do is he's trying to give you a new sense of normal. He's trying to give you a greater sense of expectation because what he has is so much greater than silver or gold. It's so much greater than Netflix or Disney Plus. It's so much greater than staying at home and playing video games all day. And I wonder, Dream City Youth, I wonder if God in the midst of our shaking is wanting us to have a greater sense of expectation through it all. And the last thing I want to leave you with is this, is, is this idea that you don't have to arrive to receive God's miracle. You see, I'd read this verse in this passage so many times, but what I see with this man is this, is that normally he would be placed at the gate and he would beg there, but it says this time, verse two, it says, a man who was lame from birth was being carried there. You see, he had not arrived at his destination to receive his miracle. And I think some of us think that, well, once coronavirus is over, then we're going to see revival in, in America. We're going to see change and supernatural change happen. But could it be that God is wanting to start right now? Could it be that God is wanting to start right now in the midst of your transition and that he's wanting to heal you where you're at? He's wanting to bring out your insecurities right now. He's wanting to bless you with something that is far greater than what you could ever receive. Dream City Youth, my hope is this, is that you would not go back to your sense of normalcy, but you would allow God to dictate what normal looks like in your life. And man, I want you to know that we, Dream City Youth, our staff, our pastors, our leaders, we are praying for you. And I would love it, man, you go back and rewatch the videos. Go rewatch Pastor Josiah, Pastor Caden, uh, Pastor Ash, Bethany, and Tim and Spencer. Go rewatch all of them. And I would love you to do me a favor. Would you write some prayer requests down of how we can pray for you? How can we pray for your new no sense of normal? Put some comments on those videos of what God is doing in your life. And man, Dream City Youth, I'm so excited for tomorrow's Daily Devo. Know that we are praying for you, we love you, and we'll see you tomorrow.